What Mehmet Daimagula wants more than anything is clarity. He's the lawyer representing the relatives of the victims of the neo-Nazi cell, the National Socialist Underground. The cell's only survivor has now been charged. Beata Shepa. The two other members, Uwe Munoz and Uwe Bernhard, shot themselves before they could be arrested. Even though it's believed that Shepa was never actually present at the scene, she has been charged with the murders of 10 people. Not only did Ms. Chepa help, she was right in the thick of this terror cell. She was a full member of this killing commando, and we want her to be sentenced as a murderer. This is not just about the sentence, which we hope will be a life sentence. It's also about making a point. This woman has blood on her hands. Shepa, Munlos and Bernhard evaded authorities for more than 10 years, laying bombs, staging robberies and committing murders. Almost all of their victims had immigrant backgrounds. Munlos and Bernhard are believed to have carried out what amounted to cold-blooded executions. The role played by Bieta Shepa remains unclear and has yet to be fully established by the prosecution service. The defendant gave the NSU a semblance of respectability. She was responsible for creating a facade of normality in the places where the cell lived. That was the only way they could ensure that their shared accommodation could serve as their refuge and as the terrorist cell's headquarters. Shepa faces the toughest charges prosecutors could bring against her. But prosecutors are taking a risk. From the outset, the investigation into the murders was hampered by a series of blunders. Neither the domestic intelligence service nor police suspected right-wing extremists were behind the killings and focused their investigation on the families of the victims. Even when the neo-Nazi cell was discovered, the authorities withheld crucial information and destroyed files. A lot can no longer be investigated because the statute of limitations has run out and a number of files have been destroyed. We need to work with what we've got and make the best of it. The intelligence failures have been the subject of parliamentary committee investigations. The former president of the Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution resigned, as did a number of his state-level counterparts. Not all the evidence that could support the charges is available. I welcome the fact that the chief prosecutors are calling for the maximum sentence. But I hope there is sufficient material and evidence to support the charges. It would be a bitter defeat, especially for the relatives of the victims. Understandably, they're following the case very closely and would be very disappointed and upset if the charges that were filed by prosecutors are not upheld by the court and fail to lead to severe sentencing. The only person who can clear up many of the remaining mysteries is the defendant, but she's given nothing away while in detention the past year. Anja Sturm is among the team of lawyers representing her. She says the prosecutor's case is insubstantial. Let me put it this way. I believe that the case as it has been presented as grounds for the charges is inadequate because it's based on the subjective notion that it's enough to show that she wanted to commit the crime. The prosecutors maintain that it is irrelevant if Shepa actually fired a gun or not. They argue that the three members of the NSU were a unified killing commando. They have almost 7,000 items of evidence, including this component of a pipe bomb and a murder weapon. They hope it's enough to incriminate the defendant. This woman was part of the group for 14 years. She's a fervent neo-Nazi. She tried to destroy evidence by setting her home on fire, showing complete indifference to the fact that she was putting other people's lives in danger, proof of a base character. She sent out the videos of the group claiming responsibility for their crimes. There's enough evidence proving that she was part of the group and not just an accessory. For Mehmet Daimagula, there is more at stake with the trial than Beata Shepa's sentence. After the complete failure of the national security system, the case will decide whether the state can ever be trusted again.